Okay, so we're back at the 455 project again. <clears throat> um, cleaned the garage out. You can see the wet floor and everything. Trying to get all the mud out of here from, from spring. And uh, in the process, I let the 440 or the 455 run for, I don't know, probably 20 minutes, just moving it around and stuff. Um, and unfortunately, my oil leak has come back on the sensor, on the pressure sensor there. So I'll have to buy one of the pressure sensors. They are 25 bucks, something like that. Relatively cheap. Um, and so I'll, I'll have to buy that and get that replaced. Uh, I think it's just coming out of the out of the, the bolt or where the wire connects in there. Um, so we'll have to, I'll have to replace that, not a huge deal. What I'm gonna do today is uh, I'm actually going to replace this return line right here. Let me see if I can get the light balanced there. There we go. I'm gonna replace this return line right there. It actually loops around and it comes up to this joint right here on the fuel pump. And that is the return line. Um, the return line is what sends the excess diesel fuel back to the tank. So I will need to uh, replace that line right there because it is leaking. You can actually see, uh, if you, hopefully if you can see down there, I really don't like this camera for this job, but if you can see down there, it has leaked in there. Um, so we'll have to get in there and uh, replace all that. Have to take off the air cleaner, a couple other things. Not a big deal in the end. Um, also, if I have time today, I'm going to go ahead and do the valve lash. Uh, so I will have to take the um, muffler off, air cleaner, and I will also replace the dust ejector uh, that I purchased. Um, this right here is the dust ejector. Um, pretty simple thing to just goes on the end of the air canister, keeps all the air canister from sucking up all the dirt and dust. So. That's what we're doing today. Um, replace that hose. That'll be the first task. Uh, let me get everything uh, off the engine to get a clear access to it and everything and we can go from there. All right, so we're up a light. See if we can't take this thing apart <clears throat> and then leave it in one piece. That's the key part or put it back in one piece. So this is the line we want to replace. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, it actually kind of wraps around in there. I'm going to start on this side um, and pull it off first and then uh, put the new line on. And then also, because uh, I, I want to run it originally, I want to run it just like it has been, uh, which is down around down here and then up. You can see, gonna see not really sure why they ran it like that, but I'm gonna start here. Um, and I think I'm gonna replace these clamps. Uh, I think I'm gonna replace these clamps. We'll see. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna replace the lines in between each injector. So the way this system works, here, I'll take this off. So the way this system works is the front injector here, there's a, line, a return line that comes from this injector right here, this injector right here to this injector right here, and then all of the diesel fuel that is surplus, I think of it as surplus, or is not being used or to cool the injectors, etc., is then sent through this return line right here. Well, this is the one that's leaking. You can kind of see that sheen on it right there. You can see it on my glove, how it came off. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tape up the, the intake here now that I've got it removed. Um, that way I don't drop anything down on the intake and have to go fishing for that because the, I imagine the intake is actually pretty daggum hard to remove. So I'm going to tape up the intake. I'm going to get my hose. And I think I'm going to start here and I'm going to run it, start running it. I, got th I picked up three feet of hose. This is just three sixteenths hose. And I'm going to start here, I'm going to run it down, and then I'll connect it and cut it to length when I get to this 
the, the initial return right there. So let me go get the hose and uh, some tape to tape up the intake and we will go from there. Okay, got everything. Here's my hose <clears throat> and uh, we're going to take this clamp off right here. Watch diesel fuel go everywhere probably. It's normally how my life works. No? Okay. Now one really important thing is once we have done this, we will have introduced air into the system. So there is a potential that you will have to deal with air in the system once you get it started again. And this clamp doesn't fit anymore. So actually what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go get a new clamp because this clamp right here, if I get over focus, I really don't like this camera for, but that clamp right there is too, too small for that line. Let me go find some hose clamps that I can use and uh, I'll come back and we'll work on that. All right, so I found my hose clamps. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm actually going to take this line out. I'm not going to take it to the point where I'm just going to run it out. But what I'm going to do is drop this line down <clears throat> where this one was running. That way it maintains the, the same track. Now this line is actually thicker than the old one. It is the replacement part, and so that's a bit confusing, but oh well, it is what it is. So I'm going to stick this on there, and then go ahead and tighten the hose clamp. Hopefully my hose clamp will tighten that tight. Yeah, I don't like that. Don't like that one bit. No chance we're going to get that on there. All right, so let me work around and try to find a hose clamp. Okay, so this repair won't happen today, but now that I've got it off, I'm going to try to go ahead and f at least fix it to where I can run it <clears throat> and not spill diesel fuel everywhere. Um, I don't have a hose clamp that is either small enough or a line that is correct. Originally, the line's 3 16 or probably whatever the millimeter conversion is, but it's a much thinner line. Um, and the new line is my, just regular fuel hose. So what I'm going to do is, sorry if my hand's in the way, I'm just going to shorten this line up quite a bit, just enough to um, just enough to to fix it. And so I'm going to drain the fuel out of this. I'm going to go ahead and cut this end off right here and you can actually see, hopefully you can see, and see the crack there. It'll ever focus. So you can see the crack in the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take and uh, clean this line up and I'm going to see if I can't reuse it for the time being and then I'll get some correct size hose clamps. I can't believe I don't have any 3 16 hose clamps and um, we'll get it fixed. So um, let me cut this to size, get it all figured out and then we'll, we'll go from there. All right, so now comes the fun part. I'm trying to figure out how to reroute this, this hose and uh, not have it rub on anything just so I can use the machine. So I've got it cut to length, I've trimmed up, trimmed it all up here and everything. And uh, now I've just got to put it back on the injector, which this line is old enough 
I'm sure this line is original to the tractor. So I'm sure it is very, very, very brittle. And the paint's coming off, so. But it's on there. So now, I take the spring clip. Move the spring clip in there. Like that to keep it on there. And hopefully that will hold it. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna see if I have enough hose to go back my original route. Because if I do, that'll save a little bit of aggravation. Nope, just short. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna come up with a new route for this hose for the immediate future. So what I think I'm gonna do is because the air cleaner comes over here and stays right here, I'm gonna have this hose position itself in here, wrap around the injectors. I'll leave a little bit of space and I'm gonna cut it off right out here and then feed it on to the return line. Okay, so there's how it's gonna run for the immediate future. We'll see if that if that fixes it. And then I'll eventually, I'll get to the store this week and, um, and I'll replace the, I'll get new hose clamps for the new line here and uh, we'll get it fixed. But I mean, it goes to show you that sometimes you don't have everything you need even though you think you do. Um, it's actually pretty easy repair. Um, I think one of the biggest misconceptions with diesel machines is they're hard to work on. If anything, because they don't have a big electrical system like gas machines, makes them almost easier to work on. Uh, people, I think sometimes people just get a little scared because of because of they're different than a gas engine. So, uh, and you I mean the injectors are a little bit hard to understand, things like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and spray off the top of the engine here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the air cleaner hook back up, um, or at least to the intake. And then what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to take the front clip off and we'll go ahead and replace the um, valve cover. Uh, we'll take the muffler off and then we'll go ahead and replace the, the valve cover uh, gasket or O-ring, whatever you want to call it. And we'll also check the valve lash while we're at it, since I'm sure that hasn't been done in a long time. So uh, that'll be on the next video.